so you've decided you want to try and flip your class. Well this video will help you with some logistics on how to actually make your videos and how to publish them in the most easy way possible. The first thing you need to do is decide the method you want to use for presentation. Are you going to tape yourself in front of a whiteboard like you see this teacher here doing? Um, if so, there are a couple resources that are really helpful for this particular type of presentation mode. It's not the one I've used, but if you're less comfortable with things like PowerPoint, it's a great option. And on my blog, you can find some links to other resources to help you out with that process. Another method is the one that you're seeing right now with me, which is called screencasting, where you put something on your screen, whether it be a PowerPoint, a Word document, really anything that you can find on your screen, the internet, and tape over it using a screen capture device. The tools for screencasting are pretty simple. You need to have a computer with an internet connection. You need to have some sort of screencasting platform, and there's a whole host of them out there. I like to use Screencast-O-Matic, which you can find at www.screencast-o-matic.com. It has a pro version, which I recommend you purchasing, which is roughly, I think it's a little less than $15 a year to subscribe to. If you're a Mac user and you use their keynote presentation, they have a recording feature um, already included within it. There are several tablet forms of screencasting, so if you like to use your um, iPad, for example, you can use that. This one's really basic and I've used all of them that I've talked about just now, but, but um, I think this one's really user-friendly, so if you're starting out, it's a good one to start with. You're going to need a headset. While you can record using the internal microphone in your computer, every time you click on the screen, you're going to hear that kind of background noise. It's just much clearer if you get a headset. Um, they're really easy to come by. Uh, I'm using this one right now, the Logitech one. You can find them on Amazon.com or at any kind of department store like that sells electronics, Walmart, Target. Um, Basically, you can get a decent one that will fit your purposes for flipping for anywhere between $10 to about $35. It just depends upon how much use you're going to make of it. You also need to create some sort of visual presentation that you're going to tape over, whether that be an internet site you're looking at, a PowerPoint, or a Word document. You need that for the screencast. And you need some sort of platform to publish to. So I know some of the sites we use, like Twan or Lexus, are now providing more in the way of uh, supporting video. I use YouTube only because I find the students are very comfortable with using YouTube. It was fairly easy to create. And then I can run a bunch of analytics on how the videos are being used, which I like. Um, YouTube surprisingly has a variety of options for publishing, including making the videos private or unlisted. So for example, for individual student work, I have private recordings there. And you can find easy links for how to set up a YouTube page on my blog. Here are some tips to prepare for recording. First, you want to start with your visual content. What you are trying to do is aim to make a recording about 10 minutes or less. Any more than 10 minutes and it becomes onerous for the student who's struggling to rewind, pause, and review it multiple times. So that's a really good um, target. Additionally, you want to limit the amount of words you actually see on the screen. Um, it just is more cumbersome and is less appealing to the viewer if you have a lot of words. You should, however, plan to read any words on the screen, like you're seeing me do here right now. Um, there's some studies that suggest when there's online presentations, such as webinars or flipped videos, that students don't actually read the words on the screen unless you sit and read them. And when you've when their uh, students have been asked to pause a video and actually read the screen, like for example on statutes uh, that are copied on the screen, they tend not to do that. So plan to read what's there and then add to it by your discussion. Make judicious use of motion. One thing I see frequently is a lot of motion because PowerPoint is becoming much easier to animate and there's tools like Prezi. And while these are very interesting to watch, they can start to become distracting. So your motion should really be limited to things that assist in learning that concept. 
one um, example that you can find on my YouTube channel that I think demonstrates um, use of motion in a way that's helpful to uh, assist the learner in the concept is uh, my transfer of venue video in which I have different uh, graphics showing the different districts and I have a moving X that moves between the districts to show physically on the screen the transfer of venue. So there the motion is related to the concept. Also make use of meaningful visuals. What you want to have something is high catching, but you also want to make sure that it's memorable for the right reason. So if you see on the slide right here, 10 minutes, that's memorable. Hopefully you'll remember to keep the video shorter. The speaking part uh, refers to the words on the screen, but it's not an overly distracting icon. And then the eye catching eye for remember to make your visuals meaningful and eye catching. But you can see that less clutter um, and more uh, engaging vi uh, visuals is helpful. You also want to prepare some notes for your talking points. One thing you want to start out from the beginning is making a call about how polished you want your videos to be. I personally want to make a one take video which means that I start from the beginning I've prepared ahead of time like I would have prepared for a lecture in class but I'm not giving a Hollywood style polished video to my students. I'll tell you that despite my ums, my wait a minute moments and some just having to pause to get my thoughts in order, the students have never once commented that they felt like the videos were not polished. In fact, I think the fact that it has things like ums in it or moments of pause and hesitation means that it is real and the students feel like I'm part of their learning experience. So don't get too concerned about making it perfect. Make sure that you create segue slides to assist you in editing and I'll show you what I mean by this. So here was the initial intro slide I gave you, Logistics of Flipping. I would have included that in a presentation or a slide similar to it in my screen. This allows me, when I go to use the editing feature of the screencasting platform, um, to find the point in the video where I probably have paused so I can cut out extra um, video. Additionally, if I've made an error and want to repeat, all I need to do is cut out the portion from one of these segues to the other. In other words, let's say I was making a 10 minute video and I made a big error at, at minute eight that I don't want to leave in there, but I don't want to go back and uh, start from the very beginning of the recording. If I've had a couple segue slides, um, all I will do is go back to the most recent segue slide and re-record that portion as opposed to recording the entire video again. And when I go back and clip out the portion of the video that had the error in it, it's now sandwiched between those segue slides. I can find it right away. Visually, I'll scroll and find it. It's very easy to do. So screencasting with Screencast-O-Matic, if you go to the URL I've provided here, you'll get an initial box that looks like this. What you want to do is sign up for a pro account. As I mentioned, it's fairly cheap, about $15 for a year. Um, and it uh, provides you a lot more uh, utility. So you can record and submit to your YouTube page. It also allows you to have editing features that you don't have if you have the free account. But if you just want to play around with it, you can make a couple free videos without actually uh, um, upgrading to the pro account. This is what the screencasting screencaster recorder device actually looks like. I can't show the live one to you right now because I'm using it, um, but this is a screenshot of what it looks like. So you see this box pops up and it's got uh, corners that you could pull and draw to be the size you want, or you can select down from this bar here the actual dimensions all the way up to full screen. And so what you do is you frame this around the portion of the screen you want to actually capture. And so in mine, my actual screencaster is capturing my entire screen here. This again is just a screenshot of what it looks like. But you can choose to do maybe several open windows and only capture one. 
you select from here the microphone you'd like to use um, and so you just do from the drop down menu just uh, click on the microphone that you have added you can actually record yourself on the webcam I tend not to do that but um, you can do that and then when you're ready to go you hit the red start button it will count down backwards from three two one and then you start recording and you just um, click escape and hit stop the same record button when you are done at the end of that it will show you this screen which is then a picture of what you recorded and if you have the pro account you'll have this little feature edit recording this is the one you click and then you move these scroll bars to the point in the screen where you find that segue slide that you now want to cut out and you move the other bar inward to the other segue slide that you know sandwiched you're mistaken and you can click the scissors again and that part clicks out um, if you don't want to edit it all you need to do is just give it a name up here click the recording name it'll appear up in this corner once you type it in and then select the, the device you'd like to publish this to and you've got a lot of options um, Screencast-O-Matic itself has some storage space for you on the pro account you can upload it to your YouTube page and I mentioned that's what I typically do um, you can store it on your Google Drive uh, Vimeo if you have an account you like to use there um, so there's several different features